Ought to have Bible reading in the schools and prayer. That's right. You see, I hope they'll have a, an um, amendment to the Constitution so who can have volunteer Bible reading and prayer. That's fine. I hope they do. Well, they probably won't. You know why? Of course, your kind of trash is back of it and don't want it. That's right. That's right. Um, Madeline O'Hare, a dirty she-devil, infidel, got money together. Her boy's embarrassed when somebody read the Bible at school, and he didn't want to read it. So she got together and got took it. Well, all the way to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court says you can't have this volunteer Bible reading prayer in the schools. Left wing Supreme Court. Oh, my. That poor, that, that man, poor man, was head of the Supreme Court so long. I knew his sister. Her husband was a pastor, a preacher. She begged me to pray for her lost brother, who was so long head of the, that left winger, head of the Supreme Court so long. But he couldn't, no, they didn't have it. Communists don't have it. If you lived in communist Russia, you, could, you wouldn't even have a Sunday school. Yet there's not a Sunday school in Soviet Russia unless it's, unless it's hidden in the cave. Nobody tells about it. They're not allowed. Yet the official religion is infidelity, atheism in Russia. Or you couldn't teach your children. If you taught your children the Bible and what I'm reported you, you might go to Siberia. Okay, do it in Russia. Now, maybe I'm kind of, maybe I'm mistreating you people. Maybe up here in Ohio, you got a law, you can't read the Bible at home with children. Can't have prayer with children, have you? Is that, is that it? That's why you don't do it, is it? Because they've got a law here that won't allow you to read the Bible and pray with your children. Is that it? Huh? Is there any law like that in Ohio? Then why don't you do it? Because you don't want to, just like other infidels, you're not interested. You see, you and the communists and the Madeleine O'Hare and left-wingers about to take America to hell, aren't you? Yeah? Why don't you just make up your mind, I'll quit claiming to be a Christian unless I set out to act like one at home and have family worship. Time Bible reading and prayer, wouldn't that be all right? You could do it, couldn't you? Amen. Don't you know God will help you about your children? They would answer your prayers and put food on the table and put clothes on the children's back and help you about the schooling and the rest of it. If you took time every day of family worship, Bible reading, and prayer, and you ought to do it, oughtn't you? Don't you think so? Oh, that, well, that's awful old-fashioned, isn't it? Yeah, but bless God. To have good children turn out to live for God. It's old-fashioned. You ought to do it. I'm going to talk to men. I wonder how many men here ought to say. Uh, first, I'm going to ask you two questions. Don't lie about it, please. How many have read the Bible for at least once? Just one time even. Read it all through every line. You mean all of it? All of it? Revelation, Chronicles, so-and-so begat so-and-so, and he begat so-and-so. How many say, I've read the Bible through at least one time, every line of it. Let's see your hand. Hold your hand up high. Yes? Oh, some of you have? About one out of six or eight. The rest of you haven't even read through. You're sure to find a bunch of Christians, aren't you? Now, you bet your children aren't going to turn out very good. How many here have time every day to read the Bible with your family, uh, Bible reading and prayer with your family at home as a regular custom? Let's see your hand, please. Hold your hand. A oh, few. Thank God for these. Thank God for these. I wonder how many men say, Brother Rice, I'd like to take a vow like Joshua. Joshua says, for me and my house will serve the Lord. And I'm going to take it too. You'll have to have God. Someone said, Brother Ross, I might, I might fail. Yeah, that's right. But there's no failure in the world as bad as not trying to do right, is it? Amen. And if you say, by God's grace, I'm going to try. And if we get behind, all right, I'll catch up. Take time to do it. I wonder how many men said, Brother Ross, in this conference, I'd like to get my home fixed up. I'd like to set my home so my children can't go wrong. So God answers prayer there. I wonder how many men say, if God will help me and my wife will stand by me, I'm going to set out to have daily family Bible reading and prayer, and I'm going to set out to have discipline and Christian spirit and love and prayer in my home. Oh, may God tame the tongues of Christian people and bring love back to be refined and sweet in the home. I wonder how many men, would you like to take a vow and say, I'm going to ask God to help me, and if he'll stand by me and my wife will help me, We'll have family and worship in our home every day and have an out-and-out -out Christian home. 
Uh, men, would you like to stand and make that vow to God? I'm starting out to leave my home for God. I'm, is that too much to ask? Isn't that what people ought to do? Isn't that too? All right, I want ever, I want ever husband and father who said, trusting God to help me, I'll undertake that. My wife will have to stand by me and help me, and I believe she will. But I'll undertake God help me to lead my family for God. And Bible reading and prayer, will you stand up with me for a moment? Stand up, God bless you, man. Come on, man, stand up with you, God bless you. You know that's right, don't you? That's right. God bless you. Other men ought to. Other men, will you? All right. Now, wait a minute. I wonder how many women said, I want that kind of a home. I'm going to back up my husband. I'll encourage him. We'll make time for it. We'll make room for it. I'll back him, back him up in that. All the Christian women said, I want that kind of a home, and I'll back up my husband in it. Stand up with us, will you? Come on, good women. Will you stand up with us on that? Isn't that right? That's right. Never heard about bless you, good women. I know that. I wonder how many young people here say, in my home, I want it. I'm a, I want my dad to be like that, my mother, and I want us to have a Christian home. And if you live in that home, you say, I'll cooperate, and I'll go along with it, and pray with it, and try to make it a success. You boys and girls and young people, are, if you live, um, will you say, where I live, I'll help to have a real Christian home. Stand up for this, young sister. Will you do that? God bless you. Will you do that? Amen. God bless you. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Just a minute. Just a moment. Thank you. Be seated. Now listen. I was at Wadsworth, Ohio. I gave an invitation to start a new home, to start over home to live for God out and out. <laughs> and a man and woman came down here and knelt together. <laughs> and the pastor said to me, that woman was unsaved. I was going to see her tomorrow. And she came. She got saved right there. They were dedicating themselves to their home love and, and kindness and prayer and Bible reading together. And she told, that meant salvation for her. I wonder if the men and women ought to come here hand in hand down this aisle and stand here for a prayer of dedication to your home. You want to do that? Would you like to make your home right? Would you like men and women to come hand in hand and stand here for prayer of dedication? You want to do it? All right. Come on, if you will. Will you do it? Come on, will you? That's right. Come on, wife, husband, wife, come on, stand hand in hand here together for a prayer of dedication. God, give us grace. Amen. God, do it for us. That's right. Don't walk out make room for others. A husband and wife come for a dedication and uh, crowd in. Make room. Don't talk the aisles. Make room for others. Time of holy dedication. That's all right. Husband and wives. Amen. Amen. Brother Hudson, wouldn't you like to pray for these homes? Okay. Come on, make room for them. Husband and wife, stand together, uh, hand in hand, arm in arm, and we'll pray. Oh, God, bless these homes and bless the children and give wisdom and, and decision and, oh, protect them from the Satan snares all about yeah. these homes and the young people. Anybody else? Come on, make room. Crowd down, make room for them. Well, here they're coming. Husband and wife, hold hands together and come for dedication. Will you do that? All right. Amen. Now, just a minute before Brother Hudson leads us in prayer. How much that I want to confess to God now? I think I haven't been very successful as a father or mother or husband or wife. I'm confessing and I say, God, help me do better. Lift your hand. Come on. <laughs> Ask God to help you do better. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And Brother Hudson, lead us in prayer for these. Our Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for this message. I pray for these fathers and mothers who are standing here. If we could go home and put into practice what we've been taught tonight, we could revolutionize not only our homes but our communities. Please help these dads be ever mindful of the vows they're making tonight and the dedication. And may they be consciously aware every day of what they're promised here tonight. It's so easy to forget it when we leave the conference and help them to fulfill every vow made to thee. Bless these dear mothers who are standing here. God bless them. May they be consciously aware of the vows they're making. And in the years to come, every day until Jesus comes, Amen. May they live them for thee, and may they be wonderful and happy Christian homes, and, and may they be good children. 
who will come out of these homes and be great preachers of the gospel. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.